Hey everyone, welcome to Unicorn Dust Designs. My name is Sammy Veltri and today I wanted to bring you 26 extremely budget friendly but upscale DIYs that I hope are really going to inspire you, get you thinking outside of the box a little bit, and make sure you guys, if you are enjoying this content, to please like and subscribe, and make sure to leave me a comment down below on what your favorite one out of the 26 were today. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start our first DIY off, we are going to use two of these houses from Dollar Tree, hashtag duh. We are gonna use the shorter, wider one and then the tallest, skinniest one. So right here, I'm stacking them on top of each other. I'm marking off where I want to cut the taller house. Then I'm gonna take my, um, <laughs> you guys, this gets really sketchy, okay? So I ended up just taking this out to the garage and cutting this with a jigsaw because it was it was tough. All right, so then I trace the inside because we pop it off, you know, and most of the time you can't get the paper off. Well, this time the paper didn't want to come off, so I have to retrace it. This is going to let us know where to put our straws. So you can definitely use wooden dowels for this. However, I didn't have those. So I was like, you know what? I have a bunch of straws. So that's what I ended up using here. So we're gonna put that all the way across, voila. And we will have like one that kind of goes over to the side, but we will fix that. So I am just taking my craft knife. I'm going to cut those down. We will have to cut just a little bit more off so that it fits back into our little house frame here. Then um, you can see right here, I had marked it off, remember, with the pin. So I kind of just kind of guess where I'm cutting, but luckily I cut in the right spot. Then that extra little straw we needed, I just cut that in half and it fits perfectly, perfectly in there. So now I'm going to take Elephant Gray by Waverly, do two coats, then taking Brushed Metal by Folk Art and some uh, Truffle by Waverly. I mix the two and I'm just pouncing it on with my stencil brush. This is going to give it that like rusted tin barn look, which I absolutely love. And who doesn't love Folk Art? Made in the USA. All right. So after cutting that top piece, you can see I'm going to go ahead and pop that out again. I'm going to clean up all of that glue. Now, what I should have done here was butt up the bottom story of our house and trace that out as well, but I, we work with it. So again, taking more straws, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just glue them all the way across. I cut them just like I did the other ones. Now I'm taking the top part of my house. I traced it where I needed to cut. Again, like I said, we do this exactly like the bottom story, y'all except I made it harder on myself. <laughs> All right, so before we piece them together, I'm going to take these jumbo popsicle sticks. These were just scrap pieces. I didn't even like try to measure them or anything. I took the uh, moss green by Waverly and we are going to draw basically windows. I didn't want them as doors. I wanted them more to look like windows. So I distressed them down, then getting a detailed brush. I'm gonna kind of, create some shadows around the windows with this. I don't know about you guys. I don't paint like very often, but when I do, not like this is even considered painting, but it really relaxes me. I should paint on canvases more often. I don't know. So as you see, I'm just making some lines. You can make them doors too. Oh, there's little hands creeping on in as usual. So after we're done with this, we are going to piece our house together. And I'm just going to use some Sam hot glue for that. So as you can see, we painted the top just like we did the bottom. We're gonna hot glue around. It fits in perfectly. And then we are now going to hot glue the top on. Look at how, this looks so stinking cute, y'all. Oh my gosh, I love the like, the fake tin. Look at how good that looks. All right, we're gonna glue on our windows. And then I ended up adding, um, 
like a thin little cross with like sticks on the top of it. I ended up adding that later because I felt like it needed to be a church or something, you know, which I mean, don't put the cross on there. Make it just like a cute little farmhouse. That's up to you. But I really like how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. It was fun. It was easy. And we made it work without dowels. All right. Knew we could make this. So this full credit goes to Chic on the Cheap. She made a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween. I will link that up in my cards and then down in the description box for you. So we are going to take two of these bowls. They come in a two pack at Dollar Tree and then this plastic container, don't know what it's called exactly. All right, so we're going to put our uh, bowls together. So I'm just using hot glue. I wish at this moment I would have used my super glue as well because I do end up adding super glue later. So then taking our little plastic jug, I'm going to go ahead and put some hot glue around that as well. Leave the lid on there. Totally fine. Now see, I put the super glue on the rims of these because it just wasn't attaching or staying the way I thought it would. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. Then, because I keep everything, y'all, and I mean everything, <laughs> I am surprised I even found these, um, but they're just clear curtain um, curtain rings, and they were perfect. So we are just going to hot glue these on. Now, you do have to hold it for quite a while just to make sure that it's adhered and it doesn't like move up or down on you, but I mean, look at that absolute perfection you could also get um uh what do you call it shower curtain rings at dollar tree too and then we're going to attach the other side now i did make one like a little higher than the other but i don't think anybody is going to really pay that much attention to it so we go ahead and do that then i reinforce it by putting hot glue like on the top of the rings and then they had like these little holes on the side and i filled the hot glue in there too all right, now we're gonna take this Rust-Oleum Hammered. We're gonna go ahead and spray paint that. And this is what it looks like after. Now, it looks beautiful. If this is your style, you do you and leave it this way. But I did not like how shiny it was. And y'all, this is gonna be my first time trying this, this galvanized look. So I took Mineral by Waverly and I'm gonna take Antique by Waverly as well. And I just put it in there, mix it together, and I'm using this Waverly chalk paint brush and I am going to basically, I want to, is it, is it stippling, stippling, stippling? I don't know. I'm pouncing the brush up and down on it basically. And then I'm getting my Dollar Tree stencil brush and I'm using that to really blend in like in between my little pounces. Gosh, I should not be a painting teacher at all. Bob Ross, I would never do you justice. So anyways, this stenciling brush is really good because it was able to get into the cracks and like behind the rings of it, but I was super impressed. I pat on my back with how this came out. Now I know you probably get the gist of this, but I wanted to show you like a sped up, just like how it all evolved because I will say that once I started moving down to the bottom, I had to pour more paint and I ended up pouring a little bit more um, antique than I did the previous time. So I had to blend that back up on top, which I actually preferred. I liked more of that brown in there because it made it look just a little bit more aged. So I followed all of that up on the back using my stencil brush to get all in those handles and just blend it all out so nicely. And you guys, that was it. That was it. And this looks amazing. Look at that. Yes, ma'am. Yes. That is what I am talking about. I was, this is my first time I've ever done this technique and now I want to do it on everything. Like this came out so beautiful. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you've ever made one of these before. So for this one, we're going to take two Dollar Tree signs. I'm going to cut the strings off the top. We'll cover the back later and we are going to bust out our ruler. So I wanted this to look like a big tag sign. We've seen the small ones from Dollar Tree, but I wanted this to be a big one. So taking my ruler, we already have our middle right there, the line in the middle, and I am going to measure on the sides three inches to eight inches. And that's going to be where I'm going to cut my angle at. 
So if you cut one side off, you can just take that little piece you cut off, mirror it on the other side and trace it out easy peasy. So I'm gonna take my craft knife, I'm gonna score that until I get to a point where I could just bend this sign back and it will break off for us. There will be a little leftover, so just clean that up. I also took the rough sanding block from Dollar Tree and you guys, it smoothed out this sign like butter. I mean, like I went around the whole sign and it looked really good. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. Then we're going to take uh, Painster Sticks. These are the smaller ones. Wish I had the bigger ones cause they're thicker and I feel like they just look more substantial. But I just lined off where I needed to cut them and then I'm going to take my table saw and cut them right here. Now, I do have this on my Amazon store link that is in my description box. And y'all, if you visit my Amazon store link, will you please click the follow button? I am gonna be starting to do Amazon Lives and you will get notified every time I do one. So, yay. Okay, so now after that's done, I am going to take plaster and we are gonna start painting this. Um, I haven't connected anything yet. I just have them laying side by side. Now in previous videos, I've told you guys to go check out um, Daisy DIY or DIY with Daisy. I will link it down in the description box. When she paints and wants something to look like distressed wood, she <laughs> lays her like chip brush to the side. And I always try to explain this to you guys and you guys are probably like, uh, that's just called painting. But I did it <laughs> in real time. You guys are gonna think I'm a nut, but I mean, I want you guys to pick up what I'm putting down. Okay, so look, see on the side, this is how we usually use the paintbrush, right? But she puts it on its side and goes down when she paints and it creates this really nice, like faux distress. I don't know what it is, you guys. I think it looks really good. I just, all right. Anywho, anywho, go check out her channel. <laughs> um, so then I'm gonna take my paint stir sticks. And since I did not stain these, I am gonna cover the entire thing up with plaster. I didn't want the wood peeking through on these because it wouldn't match the faux wood of the MDF that's peeking out of our sign. So now we're going to attach these. I'm gonna put these together and then we are going to take our Starbond Medium Adhesive. I do have this link down in the description box for you with a 10% discount code. And I'm using my accelerator. I am going to connect two up top and then we're going to put two on the bottom. This is what's gonna hold our sign together. Plus I do flip Hold on, I don't do it yet. Okay, what I forgot to do, you guys, before you put the paint stir sticks on, panel out your sign. The reason I wasn't afraid to put these two signs together to create this was because I figured, okay, there's gonna be a line in the middle, but I could just draw panels on that and it'll look like paneled pieces of wood. But I forgot to do it before I put the paint stir sticks on. So I'm just taking my ruler, a lead pencil, and then I'm uh, smearing it with my finger so it doesn't look so clean. Now on the back top, I put another popsicle stick. That way when I go to hang this, the top piece doesn't like separate. And then I had to take a mama break to play uh, Guess Who with Hank and Everett. And <laughs> then we go back to work. So this is the jute cord that I actually took off the metal Dollar Tree planters. And let me just say, I love it. I just fed it through, tied it in a knot on both sides, easy peasy. All right, now taking one of the hooks from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna paint this in plaster, cover it with Mod Podge so we don't have any flaking off. Then I'm gonna peel the back. Now I've used these before and they do come off. I didn't want that to happen when I put a full size wreath on here. So I, um, put a little bit of star bond on there as well so I can make sure it doesn't pop off. And because I'm extra, I couldn't leave it like this. It was way too plain. So I put my 20 millimeter split beads in here, spritzed it with some water, added some antique wax. I am going to just dry it right there in the box. Now I'm gonna lay my beads out and I made sure to cover those little gaps that the paint stir sticks leave. And I put 11 on the top 
11 on the bottom and I am just going to glue those on there. Don't think you need to watch that. And we are done. And you guys, like I said, this is like 18 inches long. This is a full size wreath I have on here and it makes such a statement. I love it. And you guys, we made it for two, I'll say $4 with the paint stir sticks and the wood beads if you do it. So let me know what you think of this one. So I've had these plastic candy dishes for a year. So I decided to use them. However, they were a lot wider. <laughs> I guess that was me snapping and then they're all of a sudden going to turn black right there. <laughs> so I spray, play, spray painted them with matte black. Now what she used was like a round cardboard box. So mine was a lot wider. So I decided I was going to take the thicker of the nautical rope sizes. I think this one's the eight foot strand and I'm going to hot glue it all around the top. And eventually we will hot glue on the bottom as well. After I'm done hot gluing it, then I'm gonna take my Jenga blocks. You can pre-stain these, however, I was like, not about that life. I was like, nope, we need to make this easier. So I'm taking my Jenga blocks and you want to hot glue them and butt them up to the top of that rope. You're gonna do this all the way around. After you're done with that, then we're gonna take that same, yeah, uh, there wasn't enough to put one more Jenga block. So that's what we did, we improvised. Now we're gonna take that Jacobian stain, which we're gonna use throughout the entire video. It's my favorite stain. It's in my Amazon story link and Amazon live video where I kind of go into more detail about my craft supplies. And those are in the description box. So anywho, I'm staining these, 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 and I'm not too worried about getting it in between the Jenga blocks. I thought it added some dimension to the piece. So, you know, I'll, I left it as is. So after we're done staining them, I'm gonna go ahead and get that second strand of nautical rope and we are gonna apply that to bottom. Now just make sure you guys have all of your seams lined up, meaning like the top piece of the nautical rope where the seam starts, make sure the bottom matches that as well as that random strand. Sorry if I'm like heavy breathing right now, y'all. I am pregnant and I am so winded right now. Okay, and then you're gonna put your favorite greenery in there and this is what they turned out like. And I was really surprised because my husband really loved these and I was like, really, you do? Okay, but I really like how they turned out. They're super sleek, very like modern farmhouse. So I hope you guys have a lot of functional DIYs. So I'm gonna take just a square sign from Dollar Tree this is the t adhesive tile and I am going to size it up. So for me, I wanted to put it like smack dab in the middle because the way the pattern was, I thought it was gonna look funky if I went over to the side. Does that make sense? You picking up what I'm putting down? Okay, so then I cut this and when I cut it, I, I realized quickly that the adhesive like didn't stay attached to it, which was fine. I mean, we don't need it. That's what hot glue and super glue are for, right? So I go ahead and I take it and then we're gonna grab some Gorilla Glue. I'm gonna apply that to the edges and then some in the middle. I'll grab some hot glue and that's gonna give us that immediate hold so we do not have to wait. I will stick that tile piece right on there and then we're gonna start painting it. So I am going to get Rich Black by Folk Art and I am going to give this, I, I just did one coat of the Rich Black. Now, if you don't have these tile pieces, you guys, you could always use puff paint to make your own designs. Um, I believe Nicole used like an actual um, piece of sticky tile that she had left over from flooring. So there are other options if you can't find these at your Dollar Tree. Next, I get my favorite, favorite DIY white wax. I get this from upcycledbybrie.com. I'm gonna take my chip brush and I am going to start, <laughs> I just keep laughing because I know I'm heavy breathing and y'all are probably like, what is going on with this lady? So I apologize. 
All right, so I'm gonna take that all the way down and you guys look at how beautiful, look at all the details popping out. Oh, I just think it looks so regal. I don't know, it's so fancy. Next, I'm gonna take, uh, this is the wood plank that comes in the six pack at Dollar Tree. I am also gonna take that crate that is on the top right of the screen, and I am gonna give those a good stain with Jacobian, let them dry, which they dry really fast because they like totally suck up this stain. And then we are going to hot glue them to our tile. So make sure this is flush with the bottom of your tile piece slash sign, because this is what's gonna help it stand up. And then we're gonna take that wood plank and we're gonna hot glue it to the top. Now this had um, like a raised texture to it. So for the tile piece, I did have to go kind of like behind it. You'll see me right now. I put some hot glue and then I get my detailed glue gun and kind of go behind there and make sure that it's really touching all those raised edges. I put my home decal in there, fill it with some greenery, and we are done. So thank you, Nicole, for this inspiration because I think it turned out absolutely amazing. And this just shows how you can take DIYs and just make them your own. Put your own twist and your own flair. Let it match your decor. So y'all, I wanted to quickly remind you that I now have a membership and in the membership, you get member only lives, custom badges, Cricut designs, member only posts. So there's a lot of fun things involved in the membership. I hope you guys will consider joining and that link will be down in the description. Size. But I got these chalkboards at Michael's. Um, I think the tag actually said it was from fall. So I wait until these things go on clearance. I probably got this for $3. I have tons, you guys, like 15 of them. Um, and I am going to use some antique wax. I'm gonna try to get that wood grain because the frame is wood. But then I realized, girl, you gotta do the actual inside of the frame. So stop being lazy, get your painter's tape out and just do it the right way the first time so you don't have to cry when the antique wax gets on your chalkboard and messes it up. Cause that's usually what would happen if I would have sh taken the shortcut. You know what I'm saying? I know what you, I know you know what I'm saying. All right, so I just go ahead and finish that up. I do the sides as well, the inside of the frame, let it dry and after that, Oh my gosh, you guys, this decal. So I am going to grab this decal. Okay, can I just point out that I set that painter's tape up right here so that I knew where to butt up my vinyl. And then once I took it all off, I took the, you'll see. Anyways, I am using the contact paper from Dollar Tree and I remember why I stopped using it. This took literally over 30 minutes to get onto the vinyl. It just would not. I'd, like the contact paper would not take the vinyl with it. So I had to press each letter down one by one. Oh my gosh. And weeding this, y'all, mm, mm, I don't recommend it. Okay, <laughs> but we still got the look for less, okay? So after I spend what seemed like eternity on weeding this out, and I don't know why I'm having you watch all of this either, but... This is where I grab the um, chalkboard sign. And this is where I say it's not a dupe because the dupe is actually uh, longer and like skinnier here. All right, this is where my editing skills come into play and you guys are like, oh my gosh, Unicorn Desk Design, Sammy, you are like so good at editing your videos. You should edit everybody's videos on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> okay, that's where I take it off and then I'm like, oh, girl, girl. And if you guys notice, I'm wearing my Bloodhound Mom t uh, sweatshirt. Thank you so much, Kat. This means the world to me. Um, I think I show it to you guys a little later. Um, but I just rub this on here, you guys, and that's it. I actually found this image on Google, put it into my Cameo design space, copied the image, cut it, and then I cut it out. So um, if you guys don't wanna watch, uh, buy SVG files, Look on Google for free images and you can easily um, trace them and use it that way. And then I just um, edited like the top to make it the great bathroom word search. So, all right, you guys, 
I think that's it. Yeah. Then I start, I don't know what I'm writing. Oh, old time pottery. I was watching YouTube. All right. So here is our dupe, the great bathroom word search. And I think it turned out pretty darn good. I mean, seriously, I spent $3 on the chalkboard and I spent eternity um, weeding everything out, but it still was cheaper than all right, I don't think you're ready for this. This is my favorite one, y'all. So we're gonna take three signs, big, medium, small, right here, as you can see. We're gonna take all of these apart. So take the twine off, take all of the you know eyeballs and bows and all that stuff. So now I am taking some antique wax. I am putting a good amount on there, but I'm not oversaturating it. I'm, I would say a light coat. I would say a pretty light coat. Now taking my wood grain tool. Look at how cool this is, y'all. I have this in my Amazon store link in my description box. And you're going to lay down the wax. I'm going to do it one more time for you guys. You can also do this with paint. I'll link a video down below where I actually used chalk paint instead of the wax to do this. And you're going to take the tool and all you do is rock it back and forth. And then I'm kind of tapping the excess wax off and go back and forth, just rock it. There you go. So I could do the same for the top, but for some reason this one was like sucking up the wax. But we're gonna let those dry. I let them dry overnight and look at that. Yes, sis, that is what I'm talking about right there. Okay, sorry, I'm moving around in my seat because I'm super excited. But now that that's done, we are going to piece these together. So you guys, you get, I have to cover up the back. Who would want to like lift up a sign or what we're making a shelf and then accidentally see that scary, like dismembered bunny? Nobody. My kids would like absolutely freak out. Anyways, I'm hot gluing this on some shipping paper. We're going to cut that out. Now you have a nice finished back. It's going to look like we bought this somewhere instead of making it. And that is always the vibe I'm going for. I want to have a finished product. So now I took a black dowel, cut it down to 24 inches, taking my sliced wood beads. I have those in my Amazon cart as well. These are the 15 millimeters. I put them on the ends so that our ribbon doesn't come off. All right, so now I'm taking the faux leather ribbon from Dollar Tree. Right here, you guys, I'm just, I am trying to find the length that I want for our ribbon. So I wrap it around. And then taking my dowel, I'm just playing around with placement, seeing how far I want it to hang off. Then I go ahead and cut that. Then I'm gonna cut in an additional one. Now we're gonna start piecing this together. So I tried my best to, we don't want this wonky and we don't want it lopsided. So I'm gonna start off with some hot glue. I put just a little bit of my leather ribbon on the edge. Now I wrapped the entire thing around because I wanted this to look high end. I wanted it to look finished. So I thought this added more detail. So I wrap it around and now I attach my second one. And the reason I did this was because I was trying to match up the exact amount of ribbon that I used on the other side. I hope y'all are picking up what I'm putting down here. So again, I'm wrapping this all the way around, hot gluing as I go. And now we're going to attach the straps to the opposite side. So to do that, I just used a scrap piece of ribbon just so I could see how wide to glue it down. That way it was even on each side. You know, I get my, my madness. I don't know if you guys do, but see, look how cute that is. And we're going to make three of these. That's why we did a large, medium, and small. So again, for this one, I don't know why I glued that down first, but we're doing the same thing, except I'm not gluing. I am just trying to find out how long I need my ribbon and then I will cut. So I'm going to hold that up again, see what kind of spacing I want in between my shelving. Sorry for my little Nikki boy. Um, and I cut that down and then we're gonna cut two more and we're gonna do the same thing, you guys. We're just wrapping it around, gluing it. You're gonna do this same step for shelf number three, or you can just leave it as two shelves. That's completely up to you. But I thought this turned out so, so good, you guys. I cannot wait for you to see the finished product. 
And I will say, I actually ran out of this ribbon, but I had the dark brown one. I took it outside and spray painted it black and it was amazing. Look at this. All right, you guys. Woo -woo. Oh my gosh, you guys, this makes me so happy. I am so proud of myself for making this. I just think that it looks so high end. It looks so modern farmhouse. It's rustic. And I mean, it's not going to hold the heaviest thing in the world, but I think it's amazing. And I hope you do too. Taking a Dollar Tree cutting board, I'm going to take this sticker off, Avi, and getting a chiffon by Rust-Oleum. You're going to see me use this a lot. We are going to paint the front and the back of this. I'm going to do two coats on the front, only one coat on the back. I really highly recommend if you guys use colors like chiffon or white or grays a lot, just buy the Rust-Oleum cans. It is so much more inexpensive. So now taking a chip brush, we're going to take our antique wax and we are going to distress this down. Now I get asked a lot what chip brushes are. They just have a really rough bristle on them and they're super inexpensive. You could get them at Home Depot, Dollar Tree, and they are great for distressing projects. So after we're done with that, we are going to take Jenga blocks. I'm going to take 12 total for this piece, well, this section, and I am going to hot glue them together. Now make sure when you do this that you put the hot glue on the bottom of the Jenga block. That way you don't have hot glue coming up on top and ruining your piece because nobody wants to see that white cloudy mess there. So you're gonna continue to do this. And these do come in like the variety pack of Jenga blocks at the Dollar Tree. Now we're gonna take the gold thumbtacks. I have been using these for so many projects lately, y'all. Pick them up. They are great for little added like details on projects. So these fit perfectly on these Jenga blocks, meaning they didn't go through the back and the Jenga block was soft enough that it went in nicely. I mean, I had a little trouble because these nails, y'all that work with nails, oh my gosh, it's been a while for me and learning to like readjust I've been on the struggle bus, but I'm adapted. So you're gonna do that with the remaining Jenga blocks here. And then after I'm done showing you that, I don't know why I'm so out of breath. I just walked down the stairs. <laughs> okay, so I tried using the domino pieces. They were too tall. So then we decided on the Jenga blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple of Jenga blocks and we're gonna use those just to kind of figure out our spacing here. And I'm going to use the super glue from Dollar Tree and hot glue for our immediate hold. And then I'm gonna grab a ruler cause y'all know I'm a stickler for straight lines and measuring and then measuring twice. So use a ruler here. And we're gonna repeat the same steps for the second one and the third one. Oh my gosh, if this was crooked y'all after, I would be in despair. I cannot stand anything crooked. I would literally rip this apart and redo it all. All right, so that is how it looks after. Now I got these, these are backs of like mini frames from Dollar Tree, use them during Christmas for DIYs. And I was like, hello, this is genius, if I do say so myself. So we are just going to hot glue these right on the back of our sign. And this is how we are going to stand up our little Scrabble board. All right, let's set that aside. Now we're going to take more Jenga blocks and we're gonna hot glue two pieces together. Again, focusing that hot glue towards the bottom so we don't got a messy, messy mess. All right, so make as many as you want, as many letters as you want to make. I only made enough for this project. And then I'm taking that same chiffon color, doing a messy brush on this. And now with my paintbrush still wet, I am going to dip it in the antique wax. And do you see what beautiful color this gives us? It is like a grayish brown. It is so beautiful. I love doing this color on certain projects and it tied in with the project so well. So after those are dry, y'all, I tried the rub on transfers. They were too small. I tried the Dollar Tree stickers. They were too big. So I ended up having to use my vinyl cutter to make uh, custom size letters. You could also use your own handwriting as well, especially because the lettering is so simple. So we are going to go ahead and finish that. And that is all y'all. And we probably made this for like, what, $3 versus 20. 
So the message on our board, this is you are seen and I just want my entire community to know that I see you. I see your comments. I read the struggles that you guys are going through. Some of you are sick. Some of you are going through depression. Some of you guys are just having a hard time right now. And I want you to know that I read all of your comments and I feel you to my core. And I want you guys to know that I am a safe space for you. I'm a safe place. If you ever need someone to talk to, you can email me, contact me on Instagram, whatever. If you didn't watch that, I'll link it down below. So I'm taking this canvas that I had already used. I am cutting the canvas off. And if you have a clean canvas, y'all keep that canvas. You could use heat transfer vinyl on it. Um, you could also get canvases from thrift stores as well that you can rip the canvas off. So um, what I'm gonna do is continue to take our canvas completely off. Then I'm going to grab the black poster board from Dollar Tree. You guys, when I tried this last week, I am hooked. I'm obsessed with how they turn out. I'm just gonna take that frame, I'm gonna take a craft knife, and we're just going to cut around the frame. And you can also trace it and cut it with scissors as well. So after I'm done doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the back of our frame, make sure it fits properly, and that there's nothing hanging over our edges. Come on, any day now. Maybe I just wanted you guys to watch all that. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna cut that down to size. I'm gonna set that poster board aside and I'm gonna grab my Jacobian uh, stain. This is by Minwax and I'm gonna use a microfiber cloth. If you do not have wood stain, you can just use any brown paint you have, dip a baby wipe in there, or you can even use brown paint, mix it with water and brush it on there and it'll give you the same effect. So now I'm gonna take that poster board and I am just going to staple it on the back of my frame. You don't need a heavy duty stapler, you can use a household stapler, but like the way these turn out, they you would never think this was poster board on the back of these. And I'm telling you, I'm obsessed and I'm gonna make tons of them. All right, so after we're done with that, we're gonna take these plastic planters and I'm gonna cut it in half. Now just use the like papery kind of cardboard ones, but I didn't have those. So this, this was what I chose to do. Now, since these are plasticky and they are super thin, I didn't think they would hold up with me just lining them with hot glue. So my, um, what did, what did I say? My solution was to hot glue Jenga blocks to the sides of them. That way I can hot glue the Jenga block and stick that onto the poster board and knew, and that way I would know that it had something like substantial to hold on to. So you'll see right here, put that hot glue on those Jenga blocks, adhere it. And my sign is a lot smaller than Jazz's is, but I, I made it work and I think it turned out so adorable. So next you're just gonna put the greenery of your choice or you can put flowers in there. I mean, you do you. I went with this like fern looking stuff from Walmart and I found the exact decal she used on Cricut Access and I'm using my Transfer Ease transfer tape, which is amazing because it does not rip the poster board. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a leftover sawtooth hanger from a Dollar Tree project, hot glue that to the top middle, and we are done. And you will see, it doesn't even look like poster board. I'm just, you guys, I know I keep saying it, but like I'm gonna make tons of these. They are so beautiful. They come out looking so high end. Let me know what you think of this first project. So for $2, we're gonna take this candlestick holder and this bowl, which it's red. I got it during Christmas. They do make white ones though. They make glass and they make plastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, make sure there's no hang hair, even though hang hair got into it anyways. I spray painted it white, and now we're gonna go in with our chiffon by Rust-Oleum. And I'm gonna take this, it's just a synthetic apple barrel brush. 
Now for this project and basically any project on today's video, we are just loving the brush strokes and the brush strokes are going to add so much texture to the piece it is going to add so much to the distressing when we get there but don't be afraid of the brush strokes here i want to see all of those bristles in our paints so i am now going to go ahead and paint the bowl make sure to go horizontally not vertically and we are also going to get the inside of this bowl now make sure you do two coats on each of these pieces so you fully get them covered. And then, uh, you guessed it, we are going to get Antique by Waverly. Now, if you don't find Waverly, you can also use uh, Folk Art has it, Home Decor, and Rust-Oleum. So, Linda, one of my amazing subscribers, sent me these brushes. They are apple barrel chip brushes, and they're like little mini versions. And I cannot tell you, like, Y'all, this is mind blowing. I don't know what it is, but this little brush picks up just the right amount of wax. And then the bristles, like, I don't know how to explain it, but like as a crafter, you get excited about little things like that. Like, look at this. Look at how just perfectly it distresses. Y'all, if I could find these on Amazon, I will put them in my Amazon link um, in my store because everybody needs these in their life. I'm just saying, everybody needs them. So. All right, enough about that. <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited about these darn brushes? So then I go ahead and I just distress the candlestick. And then we're gonna take that super glue again from Dollar Tree, super comparable to E6000. And then we're gonna take our hot glue, attach that bowl and easy peasy Dollar Tree squeezy. It is done and that is it. Look at how rustic and I mean, I, this looks high end. I don't know where y'all shop, but this looks high end. And then I made those little galvanized Easter eggs that I thought were super cute. How, um, this is all gonna look so pretty. All right, we're gonna start off with two beware signs. And I picked up this contact paper from Walmart and I figured I always use the shipping paper, trace it out, cut it. So I was like, you know what? Let's see if this is gonna be easier. So all I did was take the backing off, stick our signs with the graphics face down. I want to point out, however, that um, after I had glued the backings on, the tape did start, the, the contact paper did start to come off. So I would highly advise to scrape the, um, the glitter off if you do cho choose to go this route. Um, but yeah, I had to try it, right? All right, so those are all done. We're gonna go ahead and take some spackle, fill our holes in. You could also use wood filler as well. And if you don't have this, you could always cover it up with twine. So now taking the large paint stick stirrers, we are gonna put some super glue from Dollar Tree and our hot glue, and we're gonna hold that, uh, hold that. We're gonna put that straight into the middle that way it's gonna hold. And this is what I'm talking about. I glued this onto the contact paper and I don't know if it's because of the weight it started to pull off. So anyways, we're gonna take the paint sticks and we're gonna put them on the top and the bottom and well as well. And this is so when you hang it, if you just were to leave that middle one in there, then your sign would be bowing off your wall. This is also gonna help you attach hangers to it. So then taking one of the crates from Dollar Tree, I'm just taking Antique Waverly Wax and we're going to put that on the front, the sides, and the bottom. Go ahead and set that aside to dry. Now I am taking my sanding block, trying to smooth out that, what did I say? The filler, spackle, I don't know. Then taking, after that, my uh, Linen White by Rust-Oleum, we're gonna go ahead and put one coat of that on here. Now, I highly recommend if you use a lot of white to pick up a can of this because it is a lot more cost effective in the long run. This cost me about, I think, $16 at Home Depot and like the bigger bottles of Waverly are eight. So yeah, definitely. Okay, sorry this is kind of out of order. I was just like thinking things up as I was going. So this sign is, um, they had them during Thanksgiving and they also had these signs during Christmas. Now I'm trying to get this keyhole out of here and this thing was like stuck. So I applied a lot of heat to it. I got my little spatula vinyl thing. I don't know what it's called. 
And then just make sure when you're taking this off, try your very, very best not to rip your box apart. So now that that's all done, we are going to paint this one with Rich Black by Folk Art. Now, initially I only did the sides of this and I was going to leave the inside its brown color, but I did end up painting all of it. Then I took the crate and just to tie everything together, I went ahead and painted everything inside of there as well. All right, taking our yardstick, y'all, we are gonna make our faux shiplap lines. You can use permanent marker, black color pencils. You can also use um, just a regular pencil as well. And using my Arteza measuring mat, I'm using that as my guideline to get some really straight lines. So this turned out absolutely fabulous. As you can see, I wasn't looking for super clean paint job here. And this I'm just showing you, you can attach sawtooth hangers to the back of it because the nails that come on those are super small. So taking some corkboard here, we are gonna trace out two pieces of the corkboard from Dollar Tree. And the reason we're doing two pieces is because this corkboard is so thin that you could not really push pin anything to it. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna double these up so that you can actually use push pins on it. So here we go, we're just taking the backing off and I'm sticking it on there. Easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy. I really came up with that one, isn't it cute? All right, so now playing around with the placement, we got our chalkboard, that's just a jot chalkboard from Dollar Tree. We got our little signs, and then I take the brain teaser game. Thank you, Leona, for sending this to me. And at first I was thinking maybe like, some hooks, you know, for keys or whatever, but eh, I ended up scratching that idea, didn't go for it. So the professional I am, I am using a glue stick to gauge where I am going to put my signs. So I'm taking the super glue once again from Dollar Tree, hot glue, and then we are going to stick that on. And in case you're new to crafting, we use super glue for the longevity and we use the hot glue for that immediate hold. Then I'm taking my glue stick again so I have a good idea of the spacing between the two. And I go ahead and just apply that cork board right on there. Then you guys, everything is gonna be the super glue and hot glue, okay? And we're gonna put that on there. And this I thought you can put like chalk pieces, post-it notes, your push pens, I mean, your keys if you wanted to. And then we're going to apply the crate and I thought this would be good for mail. Or you could put sunglasses in it. I mean, come on, the, um, the options for this are pretty endless. All right, we're almost done. I am now gonna get a decal. Unfortunately, I did find this on Cricut Design Space, so I can't sell it on my Etsy shop. But keep in mind, you can use tons of other stencils. You could use wood cutouts from uh, Dollar Tree, the wood letters from Dollar Tree. So tons of other options for this. But I was really impressed with myself that this is all Dollar Tree minus the vinyl sticker. So you guys, this is um, Arteza transfer tape and the scraper alone that this transfer tape came with was like worth the whole roll. I definitely recommend it. I'll leave the link down in the box for you. Uh, it was really good transfer tape and seriously, that scraper is like everything. I wonder if you could just buy the scraper. I don't know why it's amazing, but it is and I have a ton of them. All right, you guys, so that was it for this sign. Uh, make sure to season your chalkboard so you don't stain it. That is the worst when you have a word on there that doesn't come off. And then just wipe it away and then you're ready to use your chalkboard. And y'all, I was so impressed with how this turned out. Like how high end does this look? And I love how like modern and chic it looks. And I was actually, I was really impressed with myself and proud of myself for creating this. Let me know if this is something that you'll try and recreate. And of course, you guys, we're using command strips. That's why I didn't actually hang it. And yeah, I, I love it. Right. I know you probably have seen this a million times, but you guys have heard me say a lot that I needed to make these. You're welcome for my goofiness. So I got these at the Dollar Tree. I, I'm just gonna call them a base because I don't know if it's like a certain base. And then for my tier tray, I'm going to use the pizza pan holder and then those um, stove top covers as well. 
I didn't, I got actually like the pie pans to use too, but I don't know. I, I didn't like that I would have to stuff things inside the pan. Does that make sense? I don't know. Okay, so I'm coming in with some linen white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. And right here, I'm just going in a circle. No rhyme or reason. Just trying to coat this, give it at least one coat. And I'm going to do that with all of them. Now, I know this is white, but look at the difference. Like, that was stark white, glossy. Definitely did not want it, like, super glossy like that. So that is why I decided to cover the white on those stove toppers. So, you guys, this is the second coat, and I just wanted to show you. Now I'm just going horizontally. I'm not going in circles, going horizontally, using a chippy brush because it will add texture. You'll see, like, the the brush stroke, see that? And I wanted that because when I go back in with my antique wax right here, I'm gonna dab it in the lid, dab it on the side so I get that excess off. And then I'm going the same way as my brush strokes, brush, brush strokes, brush strokes. Um, and I wish you could really see the texture that this gave it and how cool it looked with the the strokes whatever whatever you guys it's monday i'm a hot mess okay so uh, i don't realize until like later that you can't see what i'm doing with my brush up top so i do show you that right now i put a little little bit on it then i dab and then i'll go back into the paint i dabbed on my little pee pee pad that's what these are you guys okay they work all right so there we go that is done. Then I go ahead and if y'all have used the pizza pan things and chalk paint, you know that they chip so fast. Let me know down below what is like your hacks. What are your hacks for not having the paint chip? Because I've used spray clear before and it still chips so bad. So I have this polyacrylic water-based clear that I use on my wood. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this that way. It'll be durable because obviously you're putting things on and off it and you're probably moving it around and all that stuff. You could also probably use Mod Podge too if polyacrylic isn't something that you just have lying around. But um, I definitely knew I wanted to protect it from a bunch of chipping, which it wouldn't even be bad if it chipped. It would just make it look more rustic. Rustic in farmhouse because that's a rage rage right now okay I'm just I feel like farmhouse is like you know not like clean and finished and stuff like that so basically I'm gonna call my house a farmhouse for sure okay so anyways you guys I did like this is Jew and my dear subscriber and friend Mickey sent me a box if you guys did not see that live full of amazing goodies and this jute rope was in there and I've actually never used this kind before and I'm obsessed with it. I've used the the stuff from Dollar Tree from the hardware store but this was like the perfect like texture and size for this project. So don't mind me trying to figure out how to open this thing up which I guess I wanted to show you guys. So you guys, at the ends, they fray a little bit. And even when you cut them, well, obviously when you cut, oh gosh, geez, I need to stop talking. Okay, you guys, just go ahead and watch. I'll be silent. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so I put a hot glue at the end and then I kind of just twist it up so that I know that there won't be fraying happening. And then I am going to start underneath like the lip of this little tray stove top thing in the jigger and I'm going to go around it all the way and then I'm going to do this twice and this jute rope was like perfect size perfect size to wrap it around twice now when you get to that seam you guys make sure you put hot glue right at your seam press it down so that it looks flawless and it doesn't look like there's like a a break in your seam. So I am putting hot glue on, I don't know, like every like few inches or so, especially the bottom 
strands because you don't want that going anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So keep on going. Probably should have used my smaller Sure Bonder glue gun for this, but you know what? It was already plugged in. Me or girl be lazy. So let's follow that around. Don't worry, I don't make you watch me do this for like the other two. Imagine, oh my gosh, torture. Know what my punishment is for my kids. I'll be like, watch mom do this over and over and over again. Okay, so I do this obviously with all of them. Look at how cute that looks. Look at the perfect size, perfect size. Okay, so for the pizza pan, I am going to do it on top. I tried maybe just placing it kind of on the side and maybe gluing it, but that didn't look right. So I am going to start from the inside and then work my way out on the lip of this pizza pan. And for this one, I'm using a lot more hot glue. I'm not doing like the every three inches. I'm doing it all over. If you guys, sorry, took a drink of my energy. If you don't have those finger protectors, grab them at Dollar Tree. They are awesome. I love them. And they come three in a pack. That's what's up. Mama loves a dupe. All right. Oh, and the shirt I'm wearing too, you guys, is Dollar Tree. And I wish I would have stocked up because it is so comfortable i will wear these with like jean shorts and then tie a knot in the front and they are so so comfortable i wish i would have bought more i just found this and i was like oh this is a super cute color got it and then washed it and i was like oh my gosh this is amazing you have to um i don't know if y'all knew but like for dollar tree the the t-shirts and stuff that are there you just gotta make sure they'll have like a piece of tape or something on them to show like where the defects may be or you know whatever whatever but nobody's that close to me except my husband and my kids they don't care if I got a stain or a rip or anything <laughs> can you tell I'm a mom oh my gosh would I have said that 10 years ago no way okay so we're finishing this off make sure that you end where you began okay all right, and then we are going to move on to, I am so stoked I finally made one of these, you guys. So excited. You know what? That would be cute just as a sign. Hmm, 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 hmm. Maybe. Maybe later, girl. Okay. All right, let's put these together now. So, I think I've told you guys, the first time I've ever done one of these was a lemon plate, uh, like tear tray, and let me tell you, it was severely crooked okay so you guys I had already found the center point by doing like the x shape and I did not videotape that because seriously I am horrible with measurements with numbers math is not my thing and I don't even know if you need math just it's not my thing okay and it took me forever I had to even call my husband down Psst, don't make fun of me okay there's just some things I can't do I could craft I could craft. I could, I could definitely do that. I could pour a great glass of wine too. Okay. So now I'm applying E6000 to this and I'm doing hot glue. Do not like freak out if it gets on the side or the inside because you know what? It will not show after we are done. Now remember, I'm using hot glue because I want that immediate hold. If you just use that E6000, it's jelly-like and it will keep moving. So you wouldn't be able to touch it for like 24 hours until it dried. So that is why I also apply the hot glue to this. Now, again, I'm measuring just like I did the top, measuring all my sides, making sure it's even. Then I'm marking it off with the pencil. The pencil mark is not going to show. So don't worry about that later. Again, dousing this with some E6000 and some hot glue. And then we are going to apply that right on. Now, you guys, I've seen this done with the candlestick holders. And I do have those. But I don't know. It looked like too fancy for me. I wanted it to be like a little bit more rustic, more neutral. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with this. So here I am. Obviously, here I am right there. <laughs> 
Um, and we are going to wrap this around. Now, as you get around the curves, you're gonna have to apply a little bit more hot glue to this because then it starts moving a little bit more. So just be conscious of that if you are going to use this base bottle or anything with curves, really. And then I have to stop and eat. Well, that was tea. And then she's going to bring me a plate of vegetables. Now I know how it feels, right? So, so as I'm like going down, I'm like hunching further and further and further down because I can't see what I'm doing. And then I tried putting it upside down, but it, it, it was just even harder. So as I'm going to the top, I'm hot gluing a little bit more because, again, it's like moving with the curves of the base. And then I'm going to hot glue it off cut my rope off and it fit perfectly like you don't even see it and you guys even if this was a tier like two tier tray look at how cute that would look on its own look at how cute that is by itself nothing else like this would even be cute by like a nightstand or something for your like your rings earrings your phone whatever okay now we're going to start again measuring all sides and I don't, I chose to do it this way because I felt like it would be easier to maneuver the smaller pieces of this tray versus starting with the big tray first and having to like flip it and manipulate it. So that is why I chose to do the smaller trays first and build my way up to the big um, pizza pan. So again, measuring, I think this one was like five inches on each side or something like that. And then, um, so I didn't even think about it, you guys, but I should have paid attention to where like my seams were on my jute rope so that they could all face the same side. Because if you're, you know, if you're particular about that, which I am not, then you would want them facing the back, but it actually, it doesn't look bad at all. Okay. Look it. Super cute. Give me a thumbs up if you guys already have a tiered tray. No, give me a thumbs up if you've already made a tiered tray. Okay, you guys, this is the final look. I know if you guys hung out with me to watch this, I know it's been done like a million times, but I do not have one. And I was so excited to finally get one. And this was my first time decorating it, so cut me some slack. <laughs> I was like, what do you put on these things? It's like for tiny people. So I have to find some going to achieve this look. So these are the tile pieces from Dollar Tree. They are out right now. I just picked these up a couple days ago. And I'm going to take that Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. You could use whatever paint you'd like that goes with your decor. And I'm going to paint all three of these. I'm only going to do one coat of this paint. We're not going heavy handed on it because we want that raised decal on there or whatever you call it. I don't know. Uh, we want that to still be popping through and I don't want to put heavy coats of paint on it because then you're less likely to get those to come through when we distress this down later in the video. So we go ahead and do that with all three. I'm just using that same synthetic brush. You could use any brush. You could use a roller. I actually liked the brush marks in here. It made it look a little bit more distressed, a little bit more rustic. So go ahead and set those aside. Now I'm taking this piece of wood. It's 9.25 by 27 inches in length. And I've been watching a lot of Amber Strong lately on Facebook. And she always just gets her acrylic paint spritzes it with water and then gets her baby wipe and rubs it in and uses that as a stain. Now I had to try it of course and I was actually pretty impressed with how this turned out. Now I must say that she does use um, apple barrel when she does it which I think would be a little better because this Arteza paint is super thick, so it didn't spread as easily as I think Apple Barrel will. But I will say the Arteza paint is acrylic paint made for outdoor elements. So if you are making an outdoor sign, could be good, could protect your wood. So anyways, I do this on the sides. Of course I do it on the back. I don't care if it's not showing, it needs to be finished. So we're gonna go ahead and finish that. And then we are gonna take our tile pieces and I'm taking a sanding block. And 
Um, this is a rougher sanding block and you are just gonna distress these down. You wanna get all of those grooves, all of those little raised edges that are on there. And this comes peeking through and that bronze that is on there just looks so pretty through that white. And again, you could do this with other colors. They also have silver tile pieces as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick these on here. Now we're gonna play around with placement first. So as you're laying them on your piece of wood, make sure you're not pressing them down. Just lay them on top and look at how pretty that wood color looks with that bronze peeking through here. So of course me and my straight lines had to grab some painter's tape as usual. And gosh, my hands look so different with nails on them. They look so much more feminine. Okay, so now I'm spacing them out and I'm measuring the sides just to make sure that we got a consistent, you know, spacing going on. Now, I can't say that I did such a great job with the middle, but I tried. So go ahead and rub those on. Yeah, I didn't do a good job cleaning that up there. Okay, so we're placing that on and then I go ahead and measure the middle. And I don't know how I did not get this even because on my last attempt, I. I got it pretty good. I don't know what I was doing here, but you know, learn from my mistakes. Anyways, $3, let's see, three. This project probably was like four, or no, we'll say like $5 because the piece of wood, if you went and got it cut or something, five or six bucks. And it looks so pretty. I cannot wait to get our walls painted to hang this stuff. Okay, look at how gorgeous. Oh, Look at all of that texture. You could see the beautiful wood grain coming through and it just 18 inch wood rounds, gloves, and our microfiber cloth. I am also using Golden Pecan by Rust-Oleum. And uh, yeah, so we are gonna be staining our piece of wood and I am going with the grain of the wood here. I did pre-sand this with 80 grit sandpaper and then 220 to smooth it on out. Make sure you get the sizes of your sides of your wood rounds because they come super rough and it'll make uh, putting stain on it really hard. So make sure you also sand the sides of this. Now I prefer microfiber cloth because it holds a lot of the stain um, and moves it around a lot more. And I've tried everything y'all. So this is my, my preferred method. So here it is after drying for 24 hours. And right here I'm showing you, you see the lines in there? That's because these are glued panels of wood. So use those lines to your advantage. Now I'm taking a uh, Scotch 233 plus automotive tape. Now this is more expensive. You could get it at your local automotive shops or on Amazon. It's in my um, Amazon store link. It is just so much more adhesive and I never ever get bleeds with this stuff. So it's definitely, it's my thing, I don't know. So um, go ahead and make sure you tape off the sides. There are lines on the sides too, so make sure to follow them. Then we're gonna take Rich Black by Folk Art and our sponge roller. Y'all, the sponge roller is the way to go. If you use a brush on this, you are gonna be leaving brush strokes, which create ridges in your paint. So if you were to put your stencil on top of that paint, then your paint is then going to seep underneath your stencil vinyl and into all those little baby ridges. So that is why I prefer using the sponge roller because it's nice and it's even coats. Um, so yeah, so make sure to get the sides of this. You do not need to press hard on your sponge. There is no, no reason you should have to press hard. Then I'm gonna take the blow dryer on cool setting and I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the process. We're gonna go ahead and dry this. Do not use heat on chalk paint because it does have a tendency to crack if you do that right away. And then our favorite part, taking off the tape and seeing that crisp, beautiful line. All right, so you guys, let's go on to the next step. Now I am attaching my uh, stencil. This is with Aura Mask 813 Stencil Vinyl, also in my Amazon store link. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get my finger and just press around all of the letters, making sure everything's adhered and it's down, no bubbles, um, nice, and smooth. Then I am taking a, uh, Linen White by Rust-Oleum. 
taking the same sponge roller and I am going to just put light, even coats of paint. You do not, and I'm gonna repeat, do not have to press down on your sponge roller. If you have enough product on your sponge roller, you should just be able to do like the lightest application, the lightest roll without putting any pressure on it. So then after this, I'm doing blow dryer again on cool setting to speed up my process because we do have to do two coats of this white paint. And again, you can see how I kind of like keep going over my spots and that's just so I could create a smooth, even layer of paint. And you guys ready? Woo, you guys, look at those lines. Look at those lines. Not one gosh darn bleed. Not one, y'all. Mm-hmm, yes. Okay, so then taking our, uh, our Cricut uh, weeding tool, we're gonna go ahead and weed those right out. Now, y'all, I'm gonna give you a good tip. I had so many of you ask, how do you clear this without it smearing all over the place? So I usually have never had that problem. I usually wait 24 hours and then I put my helmsman on and I never had problems with it smearing. But I suggested to y'all use Rust-Oleum clear matte spray paint, put a light even coat over it one time, let it dry and then put your helmsman on there. So that's what I decided to do and it's a game changer. So now taking our Helmsman water-based, saying that loud because everybody, it's water-based. If you do not want that beautiful white turning yellow, then make sure to get water-based. So this is a kind of like a water, watery texture. So you just need really light amount on your brush. You're gonna coat that over one time for me. I have an overhang on my porch, so I'm only gonna put one coat of this on the front, the sides, and the back. And uh, when you do the sides, make sure you get the sides, because if you have any of this product come over your sides, it's gonna dry in little cloudy bubbles, which we do not want. So just taking my chip brush, I'm just kind of going through and blending that product into the side. And then we are also going to be doing a coat of this on the back as well. And all I did was dry this on cool setting with my blow dryer to also speed up the process here. So taking a clean, clean pad, I put this face down. We go, go ahead and do our back. Now Helmsman is what you want to use for outdoor signs because it, um, withstands humidity, all the different weather changes, snow, heat, all of that. So that's why I choose to use Helmsman Spar Urethane. So now taking our wood rounds, I am going three panels down and three inches in on each side with my D hooks. Now these D hooks have not been available for a long time on Amazon. They are back in stock, so I added them to my Amazon store link. They are my absolute favorites. So now taking our screw gun and our screw that comes with these, we are gonna go ahead and screw these into place and I do put them on on an angle. So now taking this wire jute, this is actually from Dollar Tree y'all and I love it. I also use like burlap ribbon and we'll just hot glue it and stuff. So there's so many different ways you can go about hanging these. This is just my preferred method. And if you watch some more of my videos, I have reversible signs. There's tons of different ways to do them. So I applied hot glue to the edge of this just so it didn't continue fraying. And then we're just twisting that up and it's absolute perfection. Love it. So you guys, I cheated. This is a pre-made bow from Walmart. I got it 70% off during Christmas, after Christmas. And it was just too perfect not to use. So I did get another one and I'm totally gonna deconstruct it because this bow is just like epic. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, fluff that out. I tried different greenery. Y'all know I usually always put greenery on my wood rounds, but for me, the simplicity of the like black and the white, and I don't know, it just, it looks so clean and fresh that I just wanted to keep it with the bow. So taking this industrial um, Velcro, I wanna be able to change my bow out. I wanna be able to change it to like a turquoise or a pink during spring. So I am going with Velcro to attach my, uh, my bow. So I have tried this on, if you watched my Merry Christmas, the reversible sign that I made for my girlfriend, we chose to do Velcro so she can change out her bows when she reverses her sign. And it worked absolutely great. 
So all I did was apply some hot glue to that. Well, I took like, you know, the, the wrapper off and I did the same thing right here. Took the wrapper off, put a little bit of hot glue on there and then stuck it on my board. Now you guys, I can go ahead and change this bow by season whenever I want. And this stuff is industrial. I had my mantle up with this. So here she is in all of her glory, looking absolutely gorgeous. Let me know how you like it down in the comments. And if you like, even if you're not like a wood round person, if you do like seeing these in the DIY videos, because they are so beginner friendly to make y'all, you will love making them. Okay, take these. So mine are mirrors. I believe what she used was, um, like the actual signs in this shape. And then the wooden dowels I got from Dollar Tree, but I know, um, not Dollar Tree, I got mine from Walmart, but I know they do have some at Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna take the mirror out of one of them. I am going to unscrew all of those little twisty thingy majiggers that are on the back of it. And this is what's gonna be the top of our lantern. So after that one's done, I'm gonna take six wooden dowels. I'm gonna use that same stain, Jacobian, to stain all six of these. And then once those are all dry, which you guys, like I said, this wood like sucks up the stain, I get my um, heat gun and just put a little bit of heat on them and they dry super fast. All right, so I'm gonna keep the mirror in the base of mine. Um, I thought this was great because then you didn't really have to cover it up with anything if you didn't want to. And then, oh, Everly um, colored us a picture. There we go. All right, so with the wooden dowels, I'm just going to put some hot glue on the very bottom of the dowel and then on the side of it. Then I'm gonna put it in where the angles connect. Now make sure as you're gluing these, you are holding them straight up because they have a tendency, they'll kind of like go forward a little bit and then you'll have some crooked dowels, which you don't want. So I'm going to put the, put six of them in there and then it looks like I, I want to show you like me putting all six in there cause you guys didn't get the point. So <laughs> we're gonna wrap them around. This was super easy. I end up going back in and putting some uh, super glue around the bottom of those as well, just for added security. So you might wanna do that in this step, maybe like, you know, dab the bottom with the hot glue and then like the sides with super glue. All right, so now getting the frame, I put all the dowels in there and then I'm going to go ahead and hot glue them into the little, what, what are those corners? Now Jazz, I didn't realize until after, she doubled up her signs. So like the frames, she ended up doubling them up, which I really did like. I like how mine turned out too though, so I guess it's preference. So make sure to check out her video because you might like her design better, but as you can see, I got that super glue, just put it on the bottom. And then what I like about this, like I said, is that like, if you didn't want to put greener, if you like that really clean modern look, then you can just put some candles in here and call it a day and it'll look absolutely beautiful. I put some greenery in there just to kind of show you guys what it would look like. And I did not put a handle on mine like Jazz did. So this is how it turned out. And this is a pretty large lantern and I love it. It just looks super sleek, very modern, like farmhouse or not even farmhouse. Like I think it looks gorgeous and would fit really anywhere within the house. And the bottom is really big, so it'll fit a lot. Okay, you guys. This right, now to these cutie patooties. Okay, so I'm taking these boxes from Dollar Tree. We took the insides out and then I'm sticking with the golden pecan stain color. You can also remember, you could use like 
Acrylic mixed with water, it also dries way faster, but surprisingly, this stuff just sucked up the stain and then dried right away. So I'm doing all of the outside and then the bottom of it. It's just my preference. I like a finished product. And I kept the inside um, just the raw wood color. We're gonna repeat that stuff per all three of the boxes. Then we are gonna take some wood beads. I just put them in an old bowl, put some wood stain on them, kind of shook a shook a shook them around. Then I poured them out, <laughs> tap, 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 dried them up. And then once those are dry, we are gonna go ahead and um, then move on to our domino pieces. And y'all, these are actually like little wood pieces. So pick them up if you see them. They are great and we're gonna do a lot more DIYs with them. And I am just covering these up with Rich uh, Black by Folk Art. Now I'm taking some vinyl decals I created and this is permanent 651 Oracle vinyl. You guys know I need my straight lines. I get all of my vinyl, like my black and my white vinyl um, and my vinyl ease, which is my transfer tape on Amazon. And I just buy the humongous rolls of them. And then the vinyl ease is what I'm using for my transfer tape. And it is by far my favorite I've ever tried. And that is also in the Amazon store link. So we're gonna go ahead and finish up putting these decals on our little domino pieces here. And then we are gonna move on to attaching our little wooden beads for our feet. So I just made sure that I put these a little bit more inside the box so that they weren't poking out when it stood up. And we are gonna put Avi four on each box and we are gonna repeat this for all three of our boxes. So now I'm taking painter's tape and you guys know me and my straight lines. I wanna make sure that each one is a straight line and that each of them line up with each other because I obviously want them standing by each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this with all three of our little boxes. Isn't that so adorable? Pray, wait, trust, I love it. Now taking some floral foam from Dollar Tree, we're gonna go ahead and put those in our little boxes. And then I'm taking, I'm sorry, I don't know what these flowers are called. The tags were already off them, but I just cut these down. And with two like bundles of them, I was able to put four in the middle and three on each side, but you were still able to see a little bit of that foam. So what I did was I took another bundle of Dollar Tree florals, and I don't know what these are called either. Um, I'll sh they'll come into frame like right now, any day. Um, these right here, they came out during summer and they are so beautiful and look crazy high end. So I stuffed those in there and then I took some of my scrap leaves from my stash and I tuck those in the back so that I'm covering it, but you know, like it still looks green and it looks full. So y'all, I cannot wait to show you these because they seriously, these little buggers turned out so beautiful. Look at how vibrant, like the, the like pray, wait, trust, it just pops out at you. And with those vibrant white flowers, these are just gorgeous and they would go anywhere with any decor. So let me know if you're gonna be making these because y'all, I mean, all All right, you guys. So I got these mirrors. Um, they're from Joann's. Now Joann's every season comes out with that aisle of like wood DIYs that like you can paint and everything. And after that season is over, they usually go all the way down to like 70%. That's when I got these mirrors. They've been sitting in my stash for a while. And when I saw that Kirkland's picture, I just knew what I needed to do. So these were really cool because they completely come apart. I was able to take the mirror and pop it right out of the back. That way I didn't get any paint on it or anything like that. Keep in mind, you can use the round mirrors from Dollar Tree and they have square mirrors, but I have never been able to find the square ones at my store. So I'm using these half wood beads I got on Amazon and I will leave, leave them in the Amazon store link down in my description box. And I played around with the placement first and the pack of 100 did two of these 10 by 10 signs. So I laid them out first just to make sure I got my spacing right. And then I'm gonna take one by one, put a little bit of wood glue. This wood glue y'all is from Dollar Tree and it works great. 
And then I'm gonna put a dab of um, hot glue and that's gonna give it the immediate hold and that wood glue is gonna give it the forever hold. So I didn't want to put you through the agony of watching me put all of those on one by one. So we are finishing up here. I did do it to both of them, obviously. And now we're taking uh, Linen White by Rust-Oleum and I have a one inch chippy brush and I'm going and I'm kind of like dabbing this on and brushing it on. I want to get in between all of those beads. I want to get on the side because the frame was kind of like a grayish color. And when you're getting the sides and when you're getting the inside, make sure you're brushing that on the sides of the beads as well and getting in all those little nooks and crannies there um, so that we can ensure that we're covering all of these up. Um, I loved these beads. They were, I feel like a little pricey. They were like 10 bucks for a hundred of them. Granted, I got two mirrors out of it, so I'm not that upset, but yeah, definitely a little bit more expensive, but you can also do this with just regular wood beads. All right, so now that that's all dry, we're gonna take our Antique Wax by Waverly, and I'm taking this stencil brush from Dollar Tree, and I am dipping it in the lid of the wax, and then I'm taking that bulk of like the color off of my brush and then you can either dab it on, you can brush it on, but the goal of this is a dry brush. You don't want a ton of, of color on here. And this dry brush gives me like the exact color I'm going for. It's just light enough where you could still see all of that beautiful white and it's dark enough to add a little bit more dimension. And you guys, that that's it. This was so easy and it probably took me just gluing and stuff like less than an hour. And then we're gonna go ahead, clean your mirror before you put it in. It'll be so much easier. And these pop right back in. They have the mirror and then they had like a backing on them. And I think Joanne's actually sells these all year long. Not, not positive, but are you guys ready to see the outcome of these? Look at how beautiful. I wish I was able to hang them on a wall for you guys and show you, but we haven't painted our house yet, so I don't wanna start sticking everything on the walls, but just look at all of that detail in there and nobody would ever know, ever know. And I think those are the best DIYs that like you made them yourself, even though I would proudly say I made these myself, but. All of leaf poop. Oh, sorry about my lighting, you guys. It kind of looks dark in these, but. This is the wired uh, hoop from Dollar Tree. They come in that three pack. And then I'm taking this greenery from Hobby Lobby. Now it's originally $9.99, but wait for this to go 50% off because I use these on wood rounds as well. And they are just such beautiful green pieces. I'll leave the item number down below so you guys can check it out on their website. Next, I'm taking my wire cutters and we're just gonna cut all of these branches off. And the reason I just cut them all off to begin with is that way I can look them over, see which ones are full, see which ones are thin, play around with the placement a little bit, you know? So now I'm gonna take my floral wire and I'm gonna cut about two inch strips. I'm gonna cut a few of them because this is how we're going to attach our branches to this wire. Now you're gonna have to play around. This this took me some time. This I thought was gonna be the easiest one, but this one probably took me the most time because I couldn't get the branches to sit how I wanted to. So it took about probably three of these wire pieces for each branch because in order to shape it to your hoop, you have to play around with the placement and attach it in like different places. Now I did use, which I, didn't film you guys, sorry. But um, I did use floral tape in the middle as I was kind of like finishing it off. And I thought about using it for the rest of this, but I was kind of afraid that you would see it. Even though it's green, I don't know why. Next time I'll probably try it though. And then again, you're gonna just play around with the placement. I probably used three branches on each side of this. And I will say that I did change it up and instead of how the picture the Kirkland's was, they have it hanging with the branches on the bottom. And for some reason that just did not flow with me. I don't know what it was, but I didn't like it. It just looked odd to me. And so I'm gonna end up flipping this around. So after I'm done, here we go. 
So I forgot to film you guys and I took, I found leather ribbon y'all from Dollar Tree. One of my subscribers, Ramona told me about it and I was able to find one. And um, yeah, so I just wrapped it around where I put that floral tape. Now I'm wrapping it around. I'm gonna attach it first to the, um, the wreath itself. Then I'm gonna take that little back piece, attach it to the ribbon. And now I'm gonna take these thumbtacks. You guys buy these, I've been using them a lot in my DIYs, and I am just going to get the wire cutters and cut the actual tack part of it off. And then we're gonna use that for our detail. And it looks so, so gorgeous. I love it. It's the small details. It is the small details that truly make a piece, I swear. Okay, so taking another thumbtack, you're gonna need two. And then we're gonna put that to the side. And then I'm going to get this, it's a keychain loop. I got it out of my husband's toolbox, but it was all rusted and it looked cool, so it worked. And then we're gonna glue that one on the top, y'all. And that is it for this wreath. I think it is absolutely adorable. And it's nice because it's very neutral, so it could go with any kind of home decor that you have. And you can dress it up with florals if you'd like, but see, I like it this way. I don't know why, I just think it flowed better. Now I will say with that ribbon, you guys, if you put it on the opposite side, then it'll sit flush with your wall. Uh, so I wish I would have done that, but I mean craft with before. So I'm gonna take the kitchen mat and y'all, if you have never worked with these, do not put spray paint on them. They will get sticky, they do not cure. You have to use, um, I'm using chalk paint. I don't know how acrylic paint works with them. But um, I'm gonna give this two coats of the black chalk paint. And I like to stipple my chalk paint on. It allows, not allows, but it keeps the streaks from the bristles away, if that makes sense. Okay, so two coats of this. You can coat it with Mod Podge after so you don't have any flaking. Then grabbing gallon stir sticks. These are from Walmart, Wally World. I am going to measure this out. So I wanted to make sure to cover up that like the thickest part of the mat. And then I'm going to mark it off with my pencil. I'm gonna put another one on top and then we're gonna get our third one and I'll just kind of measure where I need to cut that. Then taking my little table miter saw, this is also in my Amazon store. I'm gonna double up my paint stir sticks and then I am going to start cutting these. And this just makes it a lot easier, you know, well, hopefully they're the same size, which I didn't get them the same size. I don't know how that happened. Okay, so after we're done, I'm gonna stain them in the Jacobian. I'll be, we're gonna let those dry. I do stain the backs of them as well because, well, a half A double S like, kind of stain on the back. <laughs> and then after I'm done with that, we're gonna go ahead and just let those dry up a little bit. And like, you guys, I'm so good at editing. Ah, okay, so after you see me do all that, now we're just taking hot glue and we're gonna stick those right on. So I start with the bottom. Now, what I didn't do, which she did, and I like looked back at her video, is I should have put hot glue on the end of the um ugh, the end of the wood you guys know what i'm talking about that way the wood was also connected because you'll see right here i lift it up and then it just kind of like falls back so i have to get my detail glue gun go in there make sure the wood is glued together as well i take some twine tan tie eight not on the back of it I'm gonna hot glue that and it was like perfect. It was like 12 inches. So it made it super easy to find the middle. And then I'm gonna take my little greenery wreath and loop that through some twine, feed it through the front, tack it off on the back. And this you could easily just take off and like change throughout the seasons. But this came out looking very, I'm gonna say it, high end like it looks like a piece that you would find at Kirkland's for some reason I feel like Bianca's was like bigger 
unless I, like maybe they make bigger mats. I'm not sure, but you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I really had- All right, y'all, here is DIY number one. I absolutely love this house. It's so sweet, it's petite, it, it's absolutely adorable. So let's show you how we can make this. So this is the medium size house from Dollar Tree. These little cute wreaths are from Hobby Lobby. I will either attach the item number or if I could find a link, I will attach that as well. So as usual, I have to try and take off paper, but you know what? Majority of it was stuck to the back of it. So uh, it kind of did it for me. So as usual, I take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna go ahead and clean all of that glue up. We do not want any of that. Take our sticker off the back. It was pretty sticky, but you know what? We're gonna paint over that, so who cares? All right, so I'm using Celery by Waverly, and at first I thought I wanted this completely covered, but as I was doing it, I was like, no, I never completely cover it. Let's let's make it rustic, make it look like it's worn, and so that I left it like that. And with that one, you guys, I'm just using my Dollar Tree paintbrush. Okay, look at how cute this little wreath is, you guys. So I'm taking, they're actually called Queen Anne's. I thought they were baby's breath. That's what I would have called them. But I'm taking um, these and then I'm just putting them in, in there. I'm not hot gluing. They just fit perfectly in there. Now do watch out because see how that one had like a total hole in the middle of it. So make sure you're grabbing those full ones. Um, this DIY definitely like, made me think of all the other DIYs that come after it. It definitely inspired the rest of my DIYs in this video. Um, and these, you guys, these little wreaths, they come in a pretty big pack from, from Hobby Lobby. Okay. So I did make a decal, you guys. I mean, I think you could use other stickers from Dollar Tree or something if you wanted to spell out home or anything. But of course I had to be extra and put like a freaking paragraph on there, you know, but um that's what i chose to do so we hot glued the wreath on there then i'm going to go ahead and put the decal on and i'm just using my vinyl ease transfer paper that is linked in my amazon store down below in my description box we're going to put that away and the saying is so cute and thank you for a house full of people i love a home does it say house or home house should stay home. I should have changed that. And then of course, you know, I got to cover my back, but, uh, yeah, girl forgot to do that in the first place. I should have done that before I stuck the wreath and everything on there. But, um, I remember nonetheless, right? It's going to be like that one time I, I don't put it on that somebody would like pick it up and touch it and like, look at it and be like, uh, what's that all about? And then that's when I would fib and be like, oh, well, uh, it came from Hobby Lobby and I got it discounted 70% off because it looks like that on the back. <laughs> Just kidding. Not really. Okay. So let's glue this. I'm using the bigger hot glue gun, not the detailed one because the detailed little gun from Sherbonder, it, um, it's not as hot. So it dries really fast. So I'm just taking my time making sure I don't get it everywhere and then just putting it right back on. I didn't paint the frame, nothing. It just looked beautiful. I love that it looks natural. Ugh. It is just so, so stinking cute. Look at you guys. Um, hello. Isn't that adorable? All right. Every, I like seriously, if you can't hear my voice, I love everything in this video. So I took a spindle, used my miter saw, cut it. It literally cut in the perfect spot. Then I stole those two pieces of wood from my husband. If they sit there longer than a week, then um, it's fair game. And then early American wood stain. So I chose the wood stain. I didn't want to leave these bare because I am going to basically like dry brush the the paint on so I definitely did not want raw wood I wanted it to look similar to the spindles and the spindles all I did with those is um, I just cleaned them up with soap and water because I did get them from Facebook marketplace I mean a long time ago actually I got a huge box of them y'all 
if you want to do this project, go to like your Habitat for, for Humanity, check Facebook Marketplace, because um, you can even buy like a chair, a dirt sheep off either of those places and just knock the spindles right out of them. So um, just keep that in mind. You could also use too, you could use the glass ones from Dollar Tree. So right here, you guys, I'm trying to find my center point. Now, initially I thought I was going to stick a nail or a screw in these, but I could not find anything that was long enough to go through this piece of wood. So I keep doing it and uh, that's okay because it still helps your girl out, okay? So this is what you would do if you wanted to put like a nail or a screw through the bottom of your piece of wood to attach this spindle. But since I did not have either of those things, I chose to do wood glue and then of course hot glue because it just gives you that immediate hold right away so you could keep working on your project. And wood glue, you guys, it that Gorilla wood glue, it holds up, okay? So, sorry I keep on, I just smacked my lips again. Um, so I'm just making sure that all my sides are even so that I know what my center is, because obviously I didn't use the nail thing. That's fine. And uh, right away, super cute. Already love them. I was almost like, how can we keep them like this? And I could have put those thin, skinny candles in there, but no. Okay, you guys. So I didn't film doing these. These are little round pieces. They're from Walmart. Come to six pack for like under two bucks. I initially was like, okay, let's just use one of these on there and glue it on top. Cause before I thought I was gonna use a glass candle holder, didn't like the way that looks. And then it, it was like a light bulb, light bulb, ding, 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 ding. That's a bell, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna get these wood beads from Amazon and we are gonna glue those all around. Now this takes 19 beads is what I counted. And we're gonna use our Amazon um, detail gun. Um, you guys, I bought like a thousand pack wooden beads from Amazon and it seems kind of like you're overdoing it, a thousand beads, but I really didn't know the sizes. I didn't know what eight millimeter beads look like versus a 20. So I figured I'll buy the pack, see which ones I use the most, but I really have found that I use all of them um, and it's definitely worth the price it's under $20 highly recommend them um, for those of you that do not know down below in the description box I leave a link to my Amazon store which has most of the items that I use in there um, they are affiliate links so I do get a small commission at no additional charge to you um, I also leave timestamps um, so you can jump ahead to different projects and then um, I also leave a detailed supply list on what I use for each um, DIY down below. So in case you didn't know, now you know. All right, so we're finishing this off. Again, took 19 beads and then we are going to, sorry, dandruff, hello. <laughs> All right, girl. And then let's put some hot glue on top of there. I don't think these beads are going anywhere, y'all. Sorry, the angle on my camera. Look, at, it's like a moon pie. You guys like moon pies? I like the chocolate ones cold, not the banana. No, no banana. Okay, so you guys, for the second one, so for the first one, I had a little bit of a space. So I was like, okay, let me space these out. But then it was too tight and I couldn't fit my last bead. So then I had to take them off and I had to try and put them closer together. Now, if this happens, you guys, make sure to peel the hot glue off of that ball because it will not sit even. And I feel like it doesn't um, take to the hot glue the same. So after reworking it, your girl figured it out and it fits like perfectly. I had to squeeze it just a little bit, but it worked. It worked. Okay. So super cute. I love, love, love these. Oh my gosh. Okay. Another moon pie sandwich done. And now we are going to attach the top. So E6000 here, E6000 hot glue. Um, this E6000 was coming out everywhere except the tip. And, um, I still have not gotten one of those like toothpaste rollers. Um, I'm actually sending my husband today just to get me the mini 
as little tubes, hoping that'll help. But seriously, uh, that was horrible. So I would suggest putting this upside down like I finally do right here so that you can get the middle points of your candle holder. See, look, it, there's literally holes everywhere in this darn thing and none of it, none of it will come out. So you bet your booty that just went into the trash. Yeah, your girl was not messing around with that no more. I was peeling stuff off my fingers for like hours. So there it is. Now I'm taking um, plaster. I didn't want it stark white, but I didn't want cashew. I didn't want like the yellowy look to it. So I am just taking a one inch chippy brush and I am just going light on this. And suggestion, go with the grain of the wood when you're doing it. I just feel like it flows a little bit better. And then going up the sides, it kind of looks stripey right here, but I promise once like the top is done, it really, really comes together. Now I've seen these done on Pinterest and stuff and I was so excited to, this is my first time making my own and I was like, yes girl, especially because I have tons of spindles. So I better do something with them, right? And then we're gonna go ahead and get those beads. Now those beads were left raw, so I didn't have to put much. I did not douse the beads with paint. You don't need to do that. Just go light on this. And then we're gonna brush it on top and on the bottom. Not like anybody's going to be like putting your candlesticks upside down, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, if you were making it for somebody else, I'd wanna finish product, you know what I mean? So look at how gorgeous. And then we're going to repeat the step with this one. And y'all, I just can't believe how good this turned out. All right. As usual, you guys need to let me know which one is your favorite DIY out of all of these today because... I don't know if I could pick a favorite out. I think they're all beautiful. I feel like I pushed myself because obviously I said like I've never made these before and there's a lot of things on here I've never made before on this video. So yeah, I'm super excited to show you guys. Look at that. It is so, so gorgeous. I can't get enough of it. And, um, you can do these with any color. Like even that green color, the celery that I used in the previous project would look great on this um, wood color. All right, so now we are just going to finish these up. Not quite sure why I decided to take you through the entire process again on the second one, but you are welcome. It's beautiful, so you know. So look at how cute, you guys. Perfect. Absolute perfection. I cannot wait to show you how it looks all put together at the end because so cute. Just, just admire them. All right, you guys, are you ready for this sign? Your mind's going to be blown. So the lady's name is Peppermint Cactus. That's the name of her channel. Okay. That's where I'm getting this from. Okay. So she gets a sponge from Dollar Tree. She says she cuts it in half and she uses clear wax by Waverly antique wax. Now I've only watched like two of her videos. I think you can do any color like paint with it. You just have to have that clear wax, but I could be wrong. I'm not the pro. Like I said, this was one of those DIYs where I was like, Oh my God, I got to try it like right away. So I went out and bought everything. So these are just the foam boards from Dollar Tree. Then I'm cutting, not cutting. I am just using a black pen and I am drawing three inch panels on these. Now she, um, she usually, what do you call it? She usually cuts like the panels and does them. But like I said, I've only seen two of her videos. So I don't know if she does like a bigger thing like this, but then she actually uses her, um, acrylic nail and she punctures like almost holes so that they look like the knots of wood. I obviously don't have acrylic nails, so I used the top of this chalk pen and it actually worked really, really good. Now, however many you want, that's up to your preference. Okay, here we go. So 
We need some more clear wax here. And I feel like uh, I can't tell you how much you're supposed to use because I have no idea. Totally playing around with this concept. Um, I do feel like you need more of the clear wax than you do the antique wax. So I am blotting it on my plate, taking more of the clear wax here. And then I am going to be rubbing this base, not rubbing it. Yeah, basically rubbing it. So you're gonna put some pressure wherever, like you see how my two fingers are in front, right there. And I am just rubbing it on the foam board. I am not doing it in any particular way. I do suggest um, pushing your sponge into like where those little knots are gonna be so that they're not white. You wanna like deepen them, darken them up. Um, I can tell you that she explains it a lot better. I will leave her link actually up above and in my description box for y'all to check out because her stuff is so amazing. Like it is amazing. You would never know that it was fake wood. It's just mind blown. So as you can see, you can already see it coming together. And y'all know I work with wood. I do um, wood sign Wednesdays and I love my wood grain. I am very familiar with what it looks like. And as I'm doing this, I am just like a kid in a candy shop. Like I am so excited with how this is turning out. I think this is just such a great way for other people that, you know, might not have access to wood. Wood also is raising in prices right now. And I just think it's just such a great alternative and it's so expensive and you do not need to be a professional. This was my first time doing it, you guys. Okay. First time I didn't know how it was going to go, but I just saw her do this and I was so excited and knew I needed to show y'all this and share her page with you guys um because i know you all when it's not christmas love the farmhouse diys so this is something you definitely definitely want to try out so i am just cleaning up the top i'm using a razor blade she suggests using a razor blade not an exacto knife because it gives you a cleaner cut so i made this huge decal on my cameo so cameo cuts longer than 24 inches that is why i use the cameo and y'all check this out did you see that yes yes queen ah, love you love you okay so measuring this out sorry if you could hear my kids stomping around upstairs um measuring this out going slowly and then I used another piece for my other decal. So this, you guys, is so cute. It is so, so, so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this actually worked out perfectly on the bottom. This obviously didn't fit entirely on my uh, cameo mat, but it lined up perfectly underneath that panel I had drawn. So it was nice. It was straight. Oh uh, my gosh. I... I get excited about a lot of things in my videos, but like this is so, I mean, like look at how big this sign is. If I were to have made this sign this big, I believe it was 15 by 30 inches. It would have been, it would have been pretty dang pricey. It would have been like 80 to a hundred dollars, depending on what stain, what colors they wanted. Um, and this was like, next to nothing a dollar for the the board the sponge was two you know what i'm saying like yeah okay 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 i'll calm down sorry you guys all right finishing up this sign <sighs> i i'm just in love look at this you guys we're gonna be the greatest love story this town has ever seen and i thought this would be perfect for our new home because we're gonna be in a new town so i just look at that you guys Okay, the next DIY that I'm going to be showing you is just an added bonus because it was actually with the first like scrap piece of foam I used. It's the sign in the middle. And so she suggests to use a razor blade when cutting. Now my first mistake, I left the ruler there and was trying to cut using that as my guide. No bueno. So draw your line and then cut it because it gives you like a flawless 
flawless cut line. So here, this was my practice board, you guys, before I did the big giant one. So I was trying all different ways of putting those little uh, knots in here, but it was just, it's so fun. It's so relaxing to do them and it's easy. This was my first board and I think it turned, look at that. It is so cool. Blown away, mind blown. Yep. Y'all are welcome. Go to her page right now. All right. We'll watch my video first and then go to her page. Okay. So I'm cutting these in, um, just 10 inch slats. We're going to make like almost a planked sign here. I didn't want to waste it. It was too cute. You know what I'm saying? So just finding placement. Cause they're kind of a little crooked. That's okay. And they're kind of really crooked on the sides. So uh, using my advice, my own advice, I am drawing lines and then I will get the razor blade and cut that. And you guys, this is just those razor blades. You see the clip on the top right that I got at Dollar Tree and they came in a pack of four and I absolutely love them. I love that you can turn them around and then hide the razor part of it for safety. So yeah, get those. They're in the automotive section. So now we're gonna flip this around. I am just taking popsicle sticks or what are they? Tongue depressants or we'll just call them craft sticks. We're taking the craft sticks and we're hot gluing them to the back so that we can keep these babies together. Oh, I just love this. I just, I love this. And then I'm taking a sawtooth hanger that probably came off a Dollar Tree project, hot gluing that on so I can hang it if I choose to. And look at that, you guys. And this is a stencil. You guys, I'm sorry, I do not know the fonts of this. I had made this a long, long, long time ago for a client. Um, and it's welded together in the cameo. So I can't find out the font. So going slowly with this too. I chose to use the black on both of these because I just felt like it popped a little bit more with the brown color. And after we take that off, you guys, it is done. I did the love separately because um, I ripped the first one. There we go. <laughs> Look it out. Ooh, it's so cute. Hi, oh, okay. Let me know if you guys are going to try this down below. Let me know. And then send me a picture when you do try it. Okay, so next, y'all, we are going to make this adorable farmhouse chic wreath, which was so easy. So, I got this wreath. I forget what it's called, you guys. Um, but I had used this to make a baby mobile when Everly, when I was pregnant with Everly. Obviously, that went south. I didn't. I cut all the little things off of it. Um, this is actually fishing line. Um, so we're gonna cut all of that off. And y'all, you can use the wreaths from the Dollar Tree, but to be honest, this is from Hobby Lobby, and they are super inexpensive with the forty percent off coupon. So now I'm taking the lamb's ear from Walmart and I'm taking the Queen's Anne from the Dollar Tree. And again, I was inspired to do this wreath because of the one that we did in the beginning in the little house. So, um, the ones from Walmart come in a, like two of these little picks in one for $2. And I'm going to go ahead and lay them out first before I start poking them in there. And that's what I also love about these wreaths. You don't have to hot glue anything because the stems like go into the branches so easily, but like so securely, if that makes any sense. So I'm probably cutting the stems of these down maybe like about an inch or so. And then you see how you just kind of wedge them in there and then you can bend them around, kind of play around with the placement of them love these lamb's ear whenever i see them at walmart because they're kind of hit or miss i always grab them all right so then with this queen Anne's, i am taking all of the leaves off i cut all of them off of like their actual bundle and then i'm going to put around three because they come in like these little bunches you see how they're bunched on one little strand um, I'm going to take three of them in between each of the lambs here. And sorry, I'm out of frame right here, but I promise I don't stay that way. Um, and 
I think that these like, well, Queen Anne's, I want to call them baby's breath, look so good from the Dollar Tree. I love them and I've had them for a while now and just never found anything to do with it until now. And they are just so, like this is so pretty, you guys. I love, love the way that this, I love it how everything turned out. What am I talking about? So here we go. Now we're making it a little bit more full, adding three another one so three total in between each of these lambs ear and again not using any hot glue and that's what's nice about these wreaths too is that you can change them out because you have no hot glue so once you're bored with this and you want to change it up or you could even take like the the baby's breath out and then replace it with seasonal flowers as the months go by that's also a great idea too so obsessed with this obsessed and you could use what are the ones from oh i think this is called a willow wreath willow wreath yeah um they do make some like those i don't know what they're called from dollar tree um so you can use those too i know they make the skinny willows wreaths too at dollar tree they're just super thin so look at we're gonna fill this in just a little bit right here yeah yeah that was kind of looking naked okay there we go you guys Look at how gorgeous. Oh, it makes me so happy. Okay, I threw these in here because this was like on a whim. So like added bonus video. So these are the linen um, candles from Dollar Tree. And this is the tissue paper. You guys saw me use this tissue paper in the farmhouse vintage um, video. I'll link it down in the description box. So all I'm doing is putting my heat gun on. I am holding it there until I see it kind of get wet so that I know it's just melting just a little bit. And oh my gosh, this tissue paper just goes on and sticks to the candle so easily. I have seen this on Pinterest, I don't know how many times you guys, and I've always wanted to try it, but was so intimidated for whatever reason. And it was so easy. Now you guys, imagine being able to do this on anything on anything with the Christmas tissue paper with, I mean, anything. Imagine making like cute little birthday candles. I mean, not like, not like the little stick birthday. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. So now that we have that, I made sure that the seam where I connected it was pretty small too, because if you overlap the paper, it doesn't adhere as nicely. And then I just cut the ends off and there you go. Look at how cute though. That does not look like it's tissue paper at all all gorgeous all right you guys uh those were all the diys i hope that you guys loved this i know it's a little different from the christmas diys we're doing but i thought that we all needed all right sorry my kids came downstairs um definitely a break away from the christmas but i definitely think that it was needed because i know not everybody celebrates the holidays and uh hello we want to make sure that we have this decor for after the the holidays are over right and a lot of this stuff can be used during the fall and thanksgiving season and y'all i'm just so excited um again let me know which ones you're for our first project, we're going to be making this Rise and Shine Mother Clucker sign. It is so adorable, very farmhouse. I am going to be taking these bamboo cutting boards, which you guys, I wish when they were out, I bought like all of them because now you can't find any. Um, and we really chalk paint, a stencil I made, um, ribbon of your choice. I'm just taking a chippy brush, you guys, and I am going over this messy that's what's nice about farmhouse you don't have to be nice and neat it could be distressed it doesn't have to be perfect and i'm all about that and now i'm using the heat gun because i don't have the patience and i gotta do it when the kids are busy and as usual i am going in with my favorite brush from the dollar tree and i dabbed some of this mineral waverly chalk paint off but eh, i kind of went in heavy handed but you know what it all works out in the end because once it's all put together, this looks so good. It looks like wood grain to me and I absolutely love it. And this is my first time trying the mineral chalk paint. Love the color. I'm going to be using it a lot more. And I am just dabbing it in my lid, dabbing it on my cloth and then going in with it. Usually I don't go that heavy handed, but I'm okay with it this time. 
And again, my heat gun. You guys, you gotta pick one of these up if you're a crafter and you don't, oh, can you tell I'm a mom? I'm like doing the heat gun, I'm twisting the top on. <laughs> Okay, and here's our decal. I get all of my vinyl from um, MidwestHTV.com. They are a smaller company. Their customer service is amazing. Um, I, the shipping is super fast. And for contact paper, I just use the Dollar Tree contact paper. Works great. Doesn't come in a huge roll or anything, so that's the only downfall. But um, if you're like me and you reuse your contact paper, then you will be fine. And here I'm just applying it, pressing it down, making sure it is securely on there. And then we are going to remove that contact paper to see this beautiful, glossy, blue um, stencil left on there. I really love this stencil and the saying, and I love that I chose blue because, I mean, I'm all about the black and white, trust me, but mama loves some color, okay? So then we're going to go in with this bow. You guys, I am an addict on Facebook Marketplace. I'll get back into that. Hold on. So I'm using twine. I had already drilled holes in these. Um, I would have to measure to see how, like where I put them on there. Um, but I did it with actually all my boards because they were supposed to be made for something else and never happened. So I'm tying this because I'm going to use it as my hanger cut that excess off and we don't have to worry about it because our bow is going to cover that. Then you guys for the bow, I'm sorry, I tried to slow this down but couldn't. I am going to make this into a loop basically. I am folding it in half so I could see my center mark and I'm going to overlap the two pieces in the middle. That way when I scrunch it up in the middle and tie it off, I have both pieces inside there so that my ribbon or my bow doesn't fall apart and right there I didn't have it overlapping enough so I had to take it out retie it because you don't want that bow coming apart on you and um, this is a wire fabric ribbon I don't know you guys I get everything on Facebook marketplace some lady was selling a bunch of her ribbon for like 10 bucks of course I got it this is the boxwood from Walmart. It is 97 cents. I haven't been able to find it in a while. Um, let me know if you could see it at yours because I have not been able to find it for a couple months now. Um, now I'm just gonna hot glue this on. I kind of gauged where I wanted it to be by putting the bow on and playing around with it first. And then I'm gonna put two on each one. And that's why I put my stencil, or my, sorry, my decal so far down because I knew I wanted this greenery and the bow, so I know I needed the room. And I'm using my finger silicone cover from Dollar Tree. These are awesome. I think they come in a pack of three, so grab them if you find them because they work great. And I like how even though I have it on my finger, I just use my other finger to press it down. I'm a hot mess, you guys. And then we are going to put our middle on our bow, which is super, super easy. Um, I do make a lot of different bows. If you guys are interested in seeing how I make bows, please let me know down below and I can do that. And the easiest part, hot gluing this, you guys, and we're going to be done. And it came out so cute. Now I want to make a bigger version of this with um, pine wood that I have. I think it would look so cute. Okay, on to DIY and number two, these farmhouse coasters, you guys, these are so adorable and so easy. I am obsessed with them. So you're gonna need the cork board, Mod Podge, your tiles. I get mine from Home Depot. And then I got this scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby and they were having like I don't know, six for a dollar, or I don't know, something, or they're 69 cents. Um, so I'm just measuring my tile, which these are 4.25 by 4.25, so I actually cut my paper down to four by four. That way I don't have to worry about the paper sticking up because the tiles do have like rounded edges, so I just want it to sit on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make four of these. I'm going to keep all my scraps because you never know when those are going to come in handy. 
And I am going to be very generous with this Mod Podge, you guys, okay? We're going to put that on, make sure your tiles are clean, they don't have any debris on them or anything, because you will see that. And then I am putting the Mod Podge on our scrapbook paper, and then I'm gonna apply that onto our tile. Now, it does kind of move around a bit when you are first putting it on there. So as you'll see me doing, I kind of hold the bottom in place while I'm putting that first layer on top and then it's good to go. It doesn't move. Um, make sure you're getting those bubbles before you put this top layer on out of the paper or else you're gonna have a bubbly mess on your hands. So this is nice and smooth. I am making sure to get those edges so that they do not pop up. And I'm going to repeat this for all four of our coasters. And you guys can leave it. I think um, on the other coaster tutorial I did, do you guys know that I love coasters? <laughs> um, so this is how it looks just with the Mod Podge, which you can totally stop there. I'm just extra, okay? So I'm using this clear glaze. I saw this on Pinterest, so this was my first time trying it, but you guys, I love it. Make sure there is nothing on there. Now I am putting this on a piece of wood, that way I can transfer it to another spot to dry and don't have to touch the actual tile itself. These you just put on even coats, make sure you're overlapping, and it'll look like glass on top of it. And then I'm gonna repeat that with all four of them. And if you guys see bubbles or anything, you could go over it one more time. You see that glassy effect it gives it? And I feel like it's another layer of protection too if you're gonna have watery you know, glasses on it, things like that. So now I'm taking the sticky um, Crafter Square, um, what do you call it, cork board or whatever. The only thing that's unfortunate about these is you can only get two squares out of them because of like the rectangle shape that they sell them in. But I'm not gonna complain because I could use that for a ton of different crafts. So I'm gonna cut four of these out you guys, I'm trying different angles on these cam this camera, you know, starting out with YouTube. So if there's one you prefer, let me know which one looks better because I don't, I don't know. Okay, so I got all four of these done. I am taking the back off and then I am putting hot glue on the edges. Um, the first pineapple coasters I did, I just used the sticky and didn't put hot glue and noticed that the edges of them we're starting to pop up. So I went in and applied hot glue. So this time I'm just like, okay, sticky is good, but let's reinforce it with some hot glue. Whoa, okay, hello next project. Um, I am doing this, this is super easy, you guys. That's why I'm rushing through. I had a metal sign from Michaels and I've had it forever. I got this decal online and I'm just putting it right on top. That's why I said this is an extra bonus because it is just so easy. It's like cheating, I swear. Um, and I'm just going to apply this. Watch out, you guys, this thing is sticky. This was actually my second time doing it. The first time I laid it down and it was not where I wanted it to be. So that's it, Look, that's, no. that was DIY. Got a little something okay. right here, hang right here. Here we go. Got a little something, yeah. yeah. That's what happens when your little mom's crap through. All right, DIY number three, four? I think this is four. And it's beautiful. It is my favorite piece of them all. And you know what? I thought it wasn't going to be my favorite piece because of the way it started out. But it is so beautiful. I'm going to leave it in my room on that nightstand. So I took the glass candlestick holders. And um, I'm taking three of these frames. Now I chose these frames because of like that texture, the ridges on them. I thought it would be beautiful and stand out a little bit more instead of a flat frame. And more scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby, I believe. And this looked like plank wood. And now I'm taking Waverly Elephant Chalk Paint and applying it. So this is where you guys, I was like, oh my gosh, this is not working for me. So I applied the chalk paint to these 
and I did it for both obviously and as it was drying I was like geez you could still totally see through these so of course I'm gonna go back in I'm going to do a um, second coat of them and I even dried them with my heat gun to get like a fast dry on them thought they were completely dry i really do think they were completely dry after i did this um but when i was doing the second coat on some spots it started bringing up the chalk paint and like taking it off so then i got frustrated but after the second coat we were good okay so now i'm taking apart our frames Coffee. and we are going to go ahead and paint those the same elephant gray color and make sure you guys to get your outer part and if you're OCD like me even though it was so thin on the inside it still showed gold so make sure to get that inside of your frame too so you don't have any gold or silver or whatever peeking out they do still currently have these frames in stores so you, they're still available you can still get them and I am doing that for all three frames and make sure you guys get everywhere I don't know how but on the 8x10 I was missing like chunks off of the side I don't, I don't know maybe it was where my finger was I have no idea but make sure you double check your work I know they're only like Dollar Tree projects and stuff but for me I feel like if you're gonna do it do it right the first time just because it's inexpensive doesn't mean it has to be unfinished, I guess you can say. Treat it as if you were selling it to a customer because you'll have a lot more pride for it afterwards. So now I'm taking the glass. I was going to use the paper, but figured this is going to be so much easier. And I traced those out to get the insides of our picture frames. And we're going to repeat that step for all three of them, of course. And I got the 8x10, 5x7, and 4x8 for these, you guys, which is pretty standard for a tear tray. And um, I still want to make like the really big ones out of the pizza pan. I still have not done that one, and I'm going to because I want to buy my coffee pot and all that stuff. Okay, now we have to take all of this stuff off. Just be careful, take your time with it so you're not ripping the entire backing because it is so thin. And make sure to keep those little black hanging hardware, okay? Because you can reuse those. We can reuse everything, you guys. And now we're going to put our stuff back together. And I put it on like the tannish looking part on the outside just because it looked a little better. All right, this is when I'm like, I still despise these candles. So. I am taking the White Waverly chalk paint and I am dry brushing these. Gosh, my voice sounds weird. I'm dry brushing these all around. For some reason, they were like absorbing the paint, which is fine. So I had to kind of go over them again. But I am so glad I added this extra detail to it because as you saw in the video, it just brings the entire tray together with the white and the gray and you know the farmhouse concept I absolutely love I should have just like left these <laughs> and used them as candlesticks holders because they're so beautiful I might go back and make some candle holders with these not like with the guys you know, you know what I'm saying you know what you picking up what I'm putting down okay so this is me, I had to go back over it, add a little bit more white, and now we are ready to get started on putting these together. So word of advice, <laughs> do not eye these. Measure them out. So I'm going crisscross to get my center point. I made a previous like tiered tray thing with the lemons, and I totally eyeballed it. It was my first time making it, and I eyeballed it and then my husband was looking at it and he goes you realize that is completely crooked right and I was like no it's not it looks fine so then I like actually stepped back from my table and I'm like oh gosh those that is totally uneven so it's like in the corner of my thing oh anyways long story short it was crooked so I'm using E6000 here and I'm using hot glue and I have 
the wider part on top because you want it to support that next tier better. Okay, so if you put the thin one, you're not gonna have that much support. So that is why it's upside down versus right side up. So we're making this X again, you guys, on the back of the other frames. And I'm being OCD this time and like literally measuring every side so that I know it is not going to be crooked. So if you're like me, you'll probably end up doing the same. Okay, so I'm putting these upside down, doing more E6000. It's gonna be the same step for all of them, you guys. And hot glue. And this time I'm going upside down. This way I could see where I measured and where the center was. So for this one, okay, this one I just went ham and was like, um, I could probably do this one. <laughs> Look, I'm like, eh, whatever. Okay, you guys, and that was the tutorial. Farmhouse beautiful you can put it anywhere within your house i think my favorite is definitely the tear tray and the coasters i love love this tray let's see how long it lasts in my room with my kids it's beautiful well thank you guys for watching if there's stuff that you would like to see or things that you want to see made that you've seen elsewhere just comment down below i am always up for trying new things i appreciate you guys watching my video i'm going to leave some other videos here that you might be interested in. and make sure to hit my picture to subscribe to my channel have a great week happy monday Hey, you ate this morning. I know you did because I was the one that fed you. You got a big, big bowl. Do you have the little dog's bowl too? Hank, 